welcome. It's wonderful to have you join us for our worship today. I just want to begin with some wonderful words from Scripture that speak to all of us. Uh, Jesus says, Come to me, all those who labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. And then we read these words, Come again, let's reason together. Though your sins are like scarlet, they'll be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall become like wool. Jesus says, all the Father gives me will come to me. Whoever comes to me, I will never cast away. And then we're told to draw near to God, and he will draw near to us, to you. So let's pray together. Lord, as we begin our time of worship today, we want to thank you for being the God who really cares. The God who calls and invites us. The God who came near to be our Savior, Christ the Lord. So thank you for inviting us to come to you today, just as we are. You bring to light things that are hidden in darkness. You know what's going on in our hearts, so please, Cleanse and renew us by your Holy Spirit so we can walk in the light and glorify your name today. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm really thankful that, again, I'm not alone today, but I have a very special friend and a special guest who is Judy, who will speak to us today, the children, but we're all children in this case. So we welcome Judy today. I'm so glad you've come here to worship with us this morning. We're going to carry on with our look at the book of Ecclesiastes. And this week, uh, the line we're looking at, uh, amongst all those times to do things and times not to do things, is the one that says, there is a time to embrace or hug, and a time not to embrace or not to hug. That's rather interesting, and we're going to take a look at that in a minute or two. I must say, Bruce, though, that I'm one of those people who, generally speaking, is in favor of giving and receiving hugs. Mm -hmm. Not everyone feels the same way. And of course, we must respect other people's needs and sensitivities in this area. Of course we must. But what is it about hugs? I mean, why do we even have them in our culture? Well. Perhaps if you had a friend that you hadn't seen for a long time and you were just getting together and oh my goodness you were so happy to see each other, you came together and you shared a lovely warm hug. It's a sign of being together again, of happiness and joy. And that's a good thing, that's great. Hugs can also be used not just when we're happy, but when we're sad. So if you've had a sad, troublesome time in your life, perhaps a good friend would give you a hug and that would mean that they were supporting you, they were comforting you. Also another wonderful reason to share a hug. In fact, hugs are quite multifunctional. Scientists have even documented that a good hug can release in us chemicals in our bodies that make us feel better and are good for us. However, the Bible says that there's a time to hug and a time not to hug. So let's think about that for a minute. When might it be good not to hug? Well, for instance, we've got the best example right now, haven't we, That's in right. this pandemic. Yeah. Right now, it is only safe to hug members of your own household and your own personal bubble. We're all getting to learn that. And it's hard. That's a hard rule to sometimes hold fast to. But it is the safe rule right now, and we must do our best to respect that until the pandemic gets under control, which it will. When else might it not be a good time to hug? Well, what if these two friends had had an argument. Oh, they were just plain popping mad at each other. Oh, 
It was not a good time in their lives together. Perhaps each of them might have some real work to do to look at the root of why that argument happened and to work it through and to talk it out and finally come to a place of real reconciliation where a hug would be a good and appropriate thing. That's an important lesson for all of us to learn, I think. And it's difficult, but we can do it. We can work on it. Hugs work best when there's no uh, encumbrance hanging on them about bad feelings. Then they can work their absolute magic. This year in my life, I've had to give up a very important hug. My only sibling, my sister, lives very far away in northeastern British Columbia. And because of the pandemic, we had to cancel our travel plans this year. Mm. And it's sad. Yeah. It makes me sad. Yeah. We only get to see each other once a year because of the geographic distance. And when we come together after a year of separation, you can be assured that there is a great, big, warm, celebratory hug going on at the airport. It's marvelous. However, I know that a time will come when we will be able to hug again. But for now, we can't share physical hugs, but we can still be close to each other. We can talk more on the phone. We can send emails. We can have FaceTime. We can send each other photos of things that are happening in our lives. And we can even just listen to each other more purposefully. Those kinds of things can be virtual hugs that really mean something. So let's all try and stay as close as we can in the given circumstances by whatever safe means are open to us. And if it helps, well, you should just find your best <laughs> stuffy or teddy bear and give them a great big warm hug knowing that God loves us all the time and for all time. Bruce, do you have a song for us? I do, but first of all, it'd be kind of nice if you can send a virtual hug to your sister. <laughs> yeah. A hug to my sister. Yeah, you're yes. wonderful. Yeah. And uh, I was thinking, um, even in a pandemic, some things never change. And the love of Jesus never changes. So, a, a very familiar song. Jesus loves me this, I know. Father, we pray that we'll be able to have ears to hear what your Holy Spirit is saying to us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been walking through the Gospel of Mark, and we landed in the second chapter last week, and we're going to continue a little bit further. This is a small little section 
from Mark chapter 2, beginning at verse 13. Another episode in the life of Jesus. Jesus went out to the lake shore, and he taught the crowds that were coming to him. And as he walked along, he saw Levi sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me. Be my disciple. So Levi got up, and he followed him. Later, Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guest, along with many tax collectors and other sinners. There were many people of this kind among Jesus' followers. But when the teachers of the religious law, the Pharisees, saw Jesus eating with tax collectors and sinners, they asked the disciples, why does he eat with such scum? Yikes. When Jesus heard this, he said, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I've come to call not those who think they're righteous, but those who know that they're sinners. Jesus sees somebody, in this case Levi, and says, follow me. Follow. The invitation is a universal one. Anybody who has ears to hear and a heart that's ready is invited to follow Jesus. It sounds in a sense a bit simple. Just follow me wherever I lead. And yet we know it's universal, but it's also incredibly personal because Jesus calls us individually to begin a walk with him. So it's actually good to phrase a question this way. For me, what does following Jesus look like? There's the question. For you, what does following Jesus look like? What have you learned so far if you have begun to follow Jesus? What are you learning as you're following Jesus? What are the highlights? What are the challenges? Any insights you can share from your experience? Now this is when I really wish uh, we could be together in one room, maybe in a coffee shop around a table, and it would be a delight for me to stop talking and to start listening to you as to what you've discovered about following Jesus. Um, so I will say this, if you're able to, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook, just to type in some neat things you are, you've learned about following Jesus, that would be amazing. That would be a real delight. But in the meantime, at this moment, the best we can do is have a virtual coffee shop, if you like. So I've got a piece of paper, and I'm actually going to ask you, if you wouldn't mind, just getting a piece of paper and do the same thing I just did. Just write the word follow down on the left-hand column. And as I walk through this word follow, I'm going to be kind of throwing scripture verses out at you. Just scribble them down alongside each letter as we go along. I think it'll be really helpful. The reason I'm suggesting this is because we know life can get really heavy. And sometimes life can get really dark. And the news of late be it the pandemic, be it all the politics. It has the potential to bring us down. And uh, it can discourage us. It can distract us. It can actually cause us to be fearful, not just for ourselves, but for our friends and our family. And as we interact with other people who are in that kind of space, their hopelessness can become a bit contagious. And yet, here's the good news. Jesus is not about discouragement. He's never about darkness. He's not about distraction. He's not about delusion. So if I find myself being drawn into any of those spaces, discouragement, despair, distraction, darkness, I know for one thing, he's not leading me there. He's not drawing me there. He sees me there. He doesn't want to leave me there. Discouragement, distraction, despair, those words are not words associated with following Jesus. 
what words are associated with following Jesus? Well, I went through this, and these are the ones that came to my mind. So here we go. Beginning with the letter F, freedom. Following Jesus is all about freedom. Now again, if you have a pen, just write these scriptures down as fast as you can. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. And don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. 2 Corinthians 3.17 Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom. Very familiar words, John chapter 8, verse 36. Jesus says, If the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. It's wonderful stuff. The invitation to follow Jesus is an invitation to freedom. Galatians 5.13, you are called to freedom. Jesus in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 says these words, I was sent to proclaim release to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Freedom. And the psalmist, Psalm 118 verse 5, out of my distress, I called to the Lord. The Lord answered me, and he set me free. So following Jesus is all about freedom. I ask myself, to take an honest look at this, am I free today? If not, what dares to enslave you? What dares to try to trap you, to lead you away? We have a choice. I can become a slave to sin and let that lead me in a certain direction. Or I can become a slave to righteousness and let that lead me, lead me in the right direction. His service is perfect freedom. All right, hang in there with me. The letter O. Following Jesus is all about obedience. John 14, 23. Anyone who loves me, Jesus says, will obey my teaching. James 1.22, don't just listen to the word, do what it says. Acts 5.32, the Holy Spirit is given to those who obey him. So following Jesus, yes, all about freedom. Following Jesus, yes, all about obedience. Again, I ask myself, are you being obedient today to what you know is right or is something trying to tug you in a different direction where you know you shouldn't be going the ball is in my court your court obedience third letter the letter l if there was a little person here right now i know exactly what that little person would say and so do you love love following jesus is all about love very familiar scriptures first john Chapter 4, verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and anyone who loves is born of God and knows God. John 13, verse 34, A new commandment I give to you, Jesus says, that you love one another as I have loved you. 1 John chapter 4, 11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Again, look in the mirror. How is love evident in my life today? Who is on my heart? What about those who are nearest to me? Because oftentimes those who are nearest to me don't experience a whole lot of love sometimes. Would they have a reason to believe that I really love them? Today, by how I'm treating them today. So freedom, obedience, Love, another L word, listen. Following Jesus is all about listening. Luke eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus says, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Matthew 7, Jesus says, The one who hears these words of mine is like a person who has built his house or her house upon a rock. The one who hears these words. These familiar words from Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in. 
John 10, 27, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Again, what am I hearing? Whose voice am I listening to? Who has my attention? There are so many voices vying for your attention. Who has your attention? Following Jesus, freedom, obedience, love, listening to what he says. Two more words. Letter O, others. Following Jesus is all about others. Jesus says in Matthew 5, 42, give to the person who asks of you. He says in Matthew 25, these really familiar words, I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you welcomed me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down their life for their friends. So following Jesus means making his priority your priority. His priority is others. How is that priority working out in and through my life today? Last but not least, I wonder what it is. Well, it's not wonder, though that would work. It's worship. Following Jesus is all about worship. James 4, 8, draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. John 4, 21, Jesus says the hour comes and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beg you, Paul says, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual worship. Interesting. So does worship mark my day? Is there a song in your heart? But more importantly, are you living your life as an act of worship? Not being conformed to the world, but being transformed, making the invisible kingdom visible. So, my question, what does following Jesus look like for me, for you? It's all about freedom. It's all about obedience. It's all about love. It's all about listening. It's all about others. And it's all about worship. So it's really healthy and helpful to pause from time to time when life is going really, really well or when life is really difficult. When life may seem a bit crazy and draining, if not full out exhausting, just to ask yourself, okay, am I actually in step with Jesus at this moment? Am I following Jesus right now? Do these words mark my life today? Or have I been, have I been distracted in some way? Have I wandered off the path deliberately? Or just, I don't know how it happened, but I'm not where I should be. Whatever the case, if I'm hanging my hat in a place of discouragement, or if I'm getting used to darkness, if I'm entertaining distractions, if I'm trying to escape it all by fantasies and delusions, it's fair to say that at this moment in time, I'm not really following Jesus. And that reality check should cause me to face that, to forsake that, to forget that, and to flee from all of that that would cause, cause me to falter and fix my eyes back on Jesus. Jesus never said, follow me when things are going just fine. He says, follow me. To Levi, follow me. To you and to me, follow me. Now, now, today, not once we get through the pandemic, not once get things are a bit brighter for us. Follow me right now, today. Let freedom and obedience and love and listening and others and worship become your reality today.
It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I don't know, in fact, I do know actually, that the author of this song we're going to sing now, he probably didn't have this in mind when he wrote the song. But when I hear this song, I think of the invitation of Jesus. Follow me. Just imagine to hear Jesus saying these words to you as we sing. It's long been on my mind. You know it's been a long, long time. I tried to find a way that I can make you understand the way I feel about you, how I'm always with you. To be there when I can talk to you When there's no one else around Follow me where I go What I do, who I know Make it part of you to be a part of me Follow me up and down All the way, all around Take my hand and say you'll follow me. I'd like to share my life with you, show you things I've seen, places I'm going to, places I've been. To have you there beside me, you'll never be alone. And all the time you're with me, we will be at home. Follow me where I go, what I do, who I do. Make it part of you to be a part of me. Follow me up and down, all the way, all around. Take my hand and say you'll follow me. Amen. I'm going to pray a little tiny bit together concerning all we've just heard about following Jesus. Let's just be still for a moment. It's kind of a wonderful thing, Lord, to realize that the same way you would speak to that gentleman, Levi, just where he was at in life, you would speak to us. He had ears to hear you. And he had the desire to follow. And we really pray that we won't just have the ears, but also the desire to follow. And Lord, I would just pray now for anyone who may have said, I've tried that before, but it didn't work too well. I would just really pray that even now, that desire would return. And to be able to say, Lord, in all my weakness and in all my frailty, and all my failings, I still say yes to you. So if you would please just take me as I am and do something inside of me to give me a strength and a desire to get up and get going, to say no to what is wrong and yes to what is right, to hear your voice speaking into my life, I would love to follow you for real. I don't want to fake it. I don't want to pretend. That might be speaking to somebody today. And Father, for those of us who are trying to say yes, we just pray these words. As we think of the needs of this world and the difficulties many people are experiencing and the fears many people are feeling and the loneliness many people are enduring, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Lord, give us wisdom to perceive you diligence to seek you, 
patience to wait for you, and eyes to behold you, hearts to meditate upon you, lives to proclaim you through the power of your Holy Spirit. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.